The Starfield proved that procedurally generated worlds suck. No Man's Sky proved that pro-gen universes and worlds are unnecessarily big. And Hello Games will have to prove that both of those statements are wrong if they want to see Light No Fire become at least as successful as No Man's Sky. Which, if we're being honest with ourselves, is kind of a low bar. Ever since they dropped the Light No Fire trailer, I've been playing No Man's Sky and messing around with all of the systems and activities that have been added to the game over the years. But as I played and thought about Light No Fire and the single world that they want players to play on, I couldn't help but wonder how Hello Games will fix the empty repetitiveness of pro-gen worlds. This is a camp for an NPC race called the Autophage, and by talking to these people you can learn their language, do simple quests, and work through a main quest to unlock a staff-shaped multi-tool. Now this is a completely different camp on a different planet. And here is another one. And here is another one. In a nearly limitless universe, these are the only camp models that are used for the autophage in No Man's Sky. In Starfield, there were a handful of POIs that were recycled in a similar way, leading to boring and repetitive gameplay that led to this. Now here's the thing with procedural generation. Some game studios simply use Progen to fill a forest full of trees. This works beautifully because they're filling an empty space with a bunch of similar objects that players don't really care about. It doesn't matter if there are 5 to 10 different trees scaled to different sizes and colors to create a forest. Light No Fire will do this with all of their plant life, which simply shows it in the trailer. It's simply the smartest way to go about filling the environment of an entire planet, right? Hello Games uses it to compensate for their small dev team by letting Progen deal with more than just building a static environment. This is where Starfield and No Man's Sky failed in their world making. Running into the camp or a building for the first time is great, but once you go to a new planet and find the exact same camp or building with little to no difference between the locations other than NPCs is a very disappointing experience. That's where Starfield's progen ended, but Hello Games utilized the system in many more aspects of the game, including ships, weapons, freighters, space stations, creatures, special resources, special nodes, planet biomes, visualizations, and so on. Progen simply enabled the models of things in the game to be varied, but they're all basically the same item. Space stations, as an example, have the exact same interior structure and layout, with only the back rooms having slight variations. This might change in the next update, but we don't know what that entails yet. Progen is the core system of No Man's Sky, and it's taken several years for it to reach its current state that some would still argue is relatively empty, with little to do that has actual meaning for the character. Now once again, it's my current game, and I've dumped about 95 hours into it over the past two weeks and I'm enjoying my time milling around making resource camps in preparation for the next big update. But here's the thing, all of this progen will probably be used in Light No Fire, but if Hello Games isn't careful, the world they want to create will be another empty world filled with copies of buildings and structures and so on. Even in the trailer, we have an example of this happening already. While these two spheres have different surface textures, Odds are pretty high that their interior will be the same between the two, even if they're in different locations. I personally compare these big structures to the monoliths in No Man's Sky. Functionally, they're all the same, you just talk to them and you get a thing. But they only have a few different models, and their location is decided through Progen. Then there's this location. While it looks like we're going into a courtyard sort of area, and we don't know how big it is, given what we know about locations like these in No Man's Sky, there's a good chance that this location will again be copy-pasted into other locations around the world. And then the explorable area within that location will be extremely limited like the space stations in No Man's Sky. And what this does is it only serves to give the illusion of civilizations on the planet. Now this is fine for some people, after all there are still a handful of people that really love and play Starfield on a regular basis. And even more relevant, there have been players who've been playing No Man's Sky since its disastrous release. But this video isn't for them. This video is for those of us who want to see the evolution of what Hello Games has done with No Man's Sky. To see how they use procedural generation to help them build the world of Light No Fire, instead of leaning on it like a crutch for creativity and simply slapping a new coat of Fantasy Explorer paint on their original Space Explorer sim. After all, we've seen how well that worked out for Bethesda, right? 
Procedural generation can clearly be used in great ways to assist in game development, but there's no way it can completely replace human creativity. I really hope that Hello Games understands all of this, and Progen in Light No Fire turns out to be more than just another world of copy-pasted locations, NPCs, and items like No Man's Sky. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. You're welcome.